This right here, this is modern deck. And you can probably tell it looks very, very similar to Tweet Deck. So this isn't actually a alternative to Tweet Deck. What this is, is a set of open source modifications that run on top of Tweet Deck that basically just make Tweet Deck better. Now, because of what this is, it exists in two separate forms. Right now, you're looking at the Flatpak version. This is the way I generally prefer to use it, and this is the way I'm going to be testing it throughout the video. This is basically a Flatpak of an Electron application. But there is also a browser extension, so if you want to go to the TweetDeck website and then use it in your browser like before, it works in basically the exact same way. The only differences are the slight differences that occur from it being inside of Electron, like the way the context menus work and things like that. So the general usage and the general interface work in basically the same way that TweetDeck works, with a couple of things sort of slightly moved around. But if you've never used TweetDeck, basically, each of these columns is associated with some different aspect of your account. So this one is the home feed for my main account. This just shows the tweets going by. This one is the notifications for my main account. But this one here is the notifications for my podcast account. That is one of the reasons why Tweet Deck and Modern Deck are really useful, along with the fact that I can go and tweet as either one of my accounts without having to go and like mess around with profiles in my browser or logging in and out and things like that. Now, all of these columns are basically customizable where you want them and how many of them you actually want. So if we want to click on this plus right here to add a column, I can add any of these columns. Let's say I want to add in... I don't know, the uh, mentions for my podcast account, for example. Let's go and add that one. And once we've done that, I can then go and drag it to be exactly where I want it to be. Now, by default, when I tweet or anything like that, it's going to try and use my main account. That's just because that's the account that manages this team. But if I want to go and change that, I can go and click on this icon right here. Go over to this section here, which says default account. Now, if I go over to the tweet section, it selected the other account instead. All of that stuff is stuff I can do inside a tweet deck though. None of that stuff is special to modern deck. What is special to modern deck though, is the way that you can customize it. So modern deck doesn't take away any of the tweet deck settings. So if we go to the cog down here, click on the settings menu, things like say, muting various phrases, things like that, or changing which link shortening service is being used from Twitter over to Bitly. Things like that are still available, but there is a lot more things we can change in here. One of the most amusing ones is the NFT behavior. So you might know that over on Twitter, you can have a NFT profile picture, where it basically gives you a special shape to the image that makes you stand out from the rest of the plebs. Well, what you can do here is you can go and hide those people in modern deck, you can instantly mute those users, or you can just block them and just not have them anywhere in your life. To be completely honest, I feel like every single service that has some sort of NFT functionality needs some way to filter out users who use it. I don't care that you spent $10,000 on a JPEG and are trying to justify your expenditure, I don't want to help you. But by default, you will be notified if any sort of NFT auto action does occur. Personally, I don't care though, so I would just disable it. But what this also offers is a lot of thematic customization. So TweetDeck did have a light and a dark mode. It does have the ability to change the size of columns. You can change the font size, but that's basically all you get. Over on Modern Deck, though, we can go and change between all of these different themes here. They all look fairly similar, like there's a couple of versions of a dark theme, but there's also an AMOLED theme as well. So if you want to have a completely black screen and just have the white text, I know a lot of the guys with OLEDs really like the option to have a theme like this. But we can also change things like the accent color. Now, by default, it's this, like, bluey, greeny, gray sort of color. I don't know what color this is. Does someone explain this color to me? But we can also go and change it to something like, say, an orange, or, say, a green, or anything like that. Now, the color you're actually seeing in this box here isn't the same color it's going to be showing on the accent. I kind of wish it just showed you the correct color there so you know exactly what you're going to be getting. Under the Appearance tab, there are some other things we can customize as well. Things like changing the navigation style between the classic tweet deck, which is what I like using, and a more simplified form, which hides things like your account down here. I don't know where the settings button is now. 
I just like it the way the tweet deck works, and I'm going to keep it like that. Along with being able to change things like the column size, the font size, and even the profile picture size, because maybe you want to have like, you know, really small profile pictures, or maybe you even want to have them be squares instead of being rounded like you would normally see. But maybe that's not enough customization for you, and you want to change how everything completely looks. Well, what you can do instead is just inject custom CSS. In my case, for example, I'm not a big fan of how the default background color looks. I feel like it's, you know, a little bit too green, and then the text that's sitting in all of these columns here is a bit hard to read. I like it to be just all white text and a bit more of a darker background. So I've gone and modified that, and I feel like this is considerably more comfortable. There are some other things I would like to change, like say the accent color, for example, and get it to be a more vibrant red or something like that. But for now, this is good enough. Now, because this is built on Electron, if we go and press Control shift i that will open up our Chrome DevTools. But there is a much easier method as well. So if we go into our settings, go down to the app section, and then click on Show Inspect Element in Context Menus. I've got this enabled, and this will allow you to go and right-click on any element, and then open up Inspect Element on that thing, which should make it much, much easier to find out sort of what properties are affecting that current item. But at the end of the day, this is still built on TweetDeck, and what this means is it's all generated HTML. And because of that, good luck trying to modify very specific things. This is genuinely disgusting, and the CSS really isn't much better. There is a lot of properties that are overriding properties, which are overriding properties, which are overriding properties and trying to find out exactly what needs to be changed to get things to work the way you want it to work isn't just going to be, hey, look at it for one minute, and then you know exactly what it is. There is also a little bit of optimization customization as well. Now, stream tweets in real time and automatically play GIFs are things that are available inside of the main tweet deck. One thing that isn't, though, is improved timeline performance by not rendering off-screen columns. So if you have, you know, like, eight or nine columns, a lot of them you're not going to be able to see unless you go and slide across to that section. And there's no point updating what is in there if you're not going to be seeing it, especially if it's something that is updating relatively frequently, like say your home column, for example. But my favorite feature outside of the NST filtering is just a basic aesthetic change. Display thread on tweets that are part of a thread. So occasionally you'll see someone tweet one thing and another thing and another thing and another thing. And if you go and click on one of those tweets, it's really obvious to see they're actually in a thread. But it's not always entirely clear. Sometimes they'll tweet something, then like, you know, a couple of minutes later, they'll tweet something else. But now you can actually see, hey, this is in a thread. Maybe I want to see the rest of the context of what's being said. Now, one thing I'm not really sure of the point of is under the settings section, inside of the app section, there is a safe mode. Now, do not click on the safe mode button. It is a very bad button and you will not like it because what will happen is it disables all of the modern deck features and basically just makes this tweet deck. But the problem with that is I haven't found a way to undo it. The only way I've found to do that is to clear all of my settings and then go back and remake everything again. So before you touch that button, even though I don't really think you ever should use it, is go into the system section and then save a backup of your data. And you can load a backup at basically any point. You can go and reset your settings, do all of that fun stuff. So you're not completely out of luck if that does happen, but just make sure you keep that in mind. I presume that's a bug or I'm really dumb and don't know where the button is. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Star Link, Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.